year old, it is my great pleasure and honor to be with you. And now it is in, uh, an important subject in analytical chemistry. And this subject about qualitative analysis, detection of acidic radical anions for simple salts. Of course, uh, uh, this course is teach it for faculty of science, uh, pharmacy, uh, faculty of veterinary medicine, etc. So I hope it will be useful for you. Let us see how we can um, how we can work on uh, analytical chemistry, and this is is about detection of anions. Actually. The anion means that it has a negative charge, right? So we call it acidic radical. And uh, they are three groups. First, diluted HCl group, which is carbonate, bicarbonate, sulfite, sulfite, thiosulfate, nitrate, nitrite. Concentrated sulfuric acid is the halides. And you know halides is fluorine, chlorine, bromide, iodide, and also nitrate. And the third group, we call it miscellaneous group or barium chloride group. And they are sulfate, phosphate, borate. Of course, the student must know the symbol of each of this anion and also how to differentiate between these groups. So let us start with the first group which is dilute HCl group. They are one, two, three, four, five, six. If we take carbonate and bicarbonate, both give effervescence of carbon dioxide. It means that we need one more experiment to differentiate between both. Just to remember that when you take the salt, which is an ion, take it in solid, a small amount, then you add dilute HCl and be very careful and to make and pay very strong attention to see what happened immediately when you add dilute HCl. Why? Because what you see immediately is very important to differentiate between the six uh, uh, anions. So if there is a strong effervescence, it means a carbonate or bicarbonate, then how to differentiate between both? Very simple. You take the salt solution. In this case, after the first experiment, it is in solid. Then all next experiments are in solution. So you take the solution. Then you add magnesium sulfate. If it gives white precipitate immediately on cooling, it is carbonate. However, if it gave a white precipitate after heating, it is bicarbonate. And the same with barium chloride. It will give in cold and the bicarbonate by heating. The same with mercury chloride. It gives brownish red precipitate on cooling and it was bicarbonate after heating. If you don't see effervescence, but you see H2S gas, and H2S gas is evolved, can be detected by its bad smell. It is the bad smell of H2S. It is like egg, a spoiled egg. So you will recognize immediately, even all the lab will smell it. This means it is a sulfide. And in this case, you need to, you can confirm it by showing a paper with lead acetate. It will be, you can see it immediately, uh, uh, the detection uh, as it turns to black. Also, if you add dial nitric, nitric acid and lead acetate, it will give also black precipitate. What about if you see a SO2 gas evolved, this will be SO3, of course, and this can detect it also by odor and also it turned acidified, acidified potassium dicarbonate paper from orange to green. 
So this is very important experiment because it will give no precipitate with all our other experiment. So please give a very big attention to the first experiment by dial HCL, if it will give a reaction or not, and to what, what is the reaction? In case of cyosulfide, this will be SO2 gas again is evolved, which is detected by other, so it is the same, but here it turned acidified potassium dicarbonate from orange to, to green, so it is the same, but in this case, it will be appearing pale yellow precipitate. But if you can give, you can differentiate between S2O3 and the SO3 by another experiment, which is by lead acetate, it gave here white precipitate on heating and it turns to black. The last one, it will be about nitrite. This you can easily detect because when NO is evolved, then it turns to brown. Uh, uh, gases. So you can detect it easily in this way. So this table, please read it carefully and see how to differentiate, especially between carbonate and the bicarbonate, then between the others. But if you take this solid and you add HCl, then you heat. If, if you give reaction in cold, it's fine. If it didn't give reaction in cold, you must heat it in order to detect if there is any gases, as I have explained. Please repeat this experiment one more time in case you couldn't detect it easily. Why? In order to be sure that you don't have the salt in this group before you move in to the next group. Otherwise, it will be misleading information for you. So again, do the experiment of HCl two times in order to be sure. And if you heat and no reaction at all, it means that your salt is not in this group and you will go to the next group, which is H2SO4 group. In this experiment, you take again the salt, very little amount of the solid in the bottom of the tube. And the tube must be dry in case of dial HCl and also in case of conch sulfuric acid. Why dry tube? Then the salt will go down to the bottom of the tube. Then you can see the reaction easily. But if it is wet tube, then you cannot detect easily. So you take small amount of the anion in the bottom of the tube in dry tube. Then you add conch sulfuric acid and pay attention. What will happen if it is an outer and the production of white fumes? It means it is chloride, and it turns blue litmus paper to red because it is HCl. Then you can see it easily, and also it form white clouds of ammonia chloride. If you show it, if you show a glass road with ammonia, it's very easy to detect. You can further confirm it by lead acetate. It will give white precipitate. What about if give reddish brown? And this is very easy to detect because it will be immediately uh, clear reddish brown fumes. And then it means it is bromide. And in this case, it will give with lead acetate again white crystalline precipitate. What about on warming? So again, if no reaction on cold, then by warming, if it gives violet vapors, it means it is iodide, right? And in this case, if you add lead acetate, it is very characteristic color because this is the only one give yellow precipitate of lead iodide. So it's easily to confirm. What about if it is reddish brown vapors, but it is not with such uh, like bromine? This is much less than bromine. However, you can differentiate between nitrate and bromide by lead acetate experiment. It gave white crystalline in case of bromide, but it doesn't give with nitrate. Another confirmatory test, if you take the boiling solution with zinc dust and sodium hydroxide, 
no reaction with bromide, but it gave it is reaction with nitrate because the red litmus paper will be blue due to ammonia forms. So for group HCL, you again do the experiment two times in order to be sure about the direction. And if you couldn't see reaction on cold and on hot, and you do it two times, this means that your anion is not in the group of H2SO4. It means it will be in the last and third group, which we call it miscellaneous group. And it is sulfate, phosphate, and borate. What about how to differentiate between the three? Right, we take barium chloride solution, it gives white precipitate in case of sulfate, and in case which is insoluble in dial HCl, but soluble in boiling. While in phosphate, it gives white amorphous precipitate, and in borate, it gives white precipitate. Next experiment is very characteristic for phosphate because it gives yellow precipitate while it gave white precipitate with the two others. This means that you can confirm phosphate clearly by the reaction with silver nitrate since it gave yellow precipitate, right? Then next experiment will differentiate between sulfate and the phosphate. How do you differentiate? You add, take the solution and you add lead acetate. It gave white precipitate. This means it is sulfate. If no reaction, it means phosphate. I hope it is clear for you and you will, you will not uh, uh, have a problem to differentiate between such anions. So please write your comments and distribute these videos to the other students. I hope it will be useful for you. Thank you very much for your attention and also uh, remember to practice on the equation. You will see it is easily, uh, uh, usually, that uh, uh, you can do it by yourself, by positive and the negative, for example, here, and uh, then do the reaction, uh, 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 as you can see in the equations here. Thank you.